So I've got a little job to do here. Um, I've been asked uh, by a local company, they're looking for 20 aluminium blocks made up like this. And they're basically three quarter by inch, three quarter by inch in section. And they're 70 millimeters long and they have three holes in them. Um, basically, you have two five millimeter holes, one either end, an M8 thread right through in the center and a counterboard hole, uh, 16 mil in diameter, um, set to quite a critical depth, and then machined out, tapped, and what have you, and cut to length. Um, the only things that are critical, really, is the depth of this step, and obviously the position of the three holes. I mean, it, the center line about from the center. Um, the overall length isn't critical at all, but uh, I like to make them smack on 70 mil, which is what, what it says, but basically the ends of this block are hanging in fresh air but it's nice to have them machined off um, so I've got a length bar first thing I'm going to do is cut up 20 pieces two or three mil longer 73 mil something like that and chop them up and for that I'm going to use my evolution chop saw so this is the evolution chop saw um, it's designed for cutting aluminium up to certain sizes and what have you but uh, it'll be absolutely fine for cutting this three quarter by one um, as you can see I've set up a stop on the bed there um, put a block in there and I've just checked between the blade and the uh, sample block which I know is finished machine to size it's exactly 70 mil so I'll get chopping So there we are, that didn't take long at all, 20 odd blocks cut. Right, so the next thing you do, put them up in the lathe. Let's have a look. Um, there's one already in the four jaw chuck. Um, I didn't need to clock it up, roughly central about with the jaws in the four, uh, in the two orientations. Um, just to get it roughly central so it's not wobbling all over the place and vibrating. And the first thing I'm going to do is machine this end, which at the moment is a sword cut and we want a nice machine end uh, not worried about a size just a clean up cut to start with so the first thing i'll do is bring the tip of my lathe tool and just can we see it not quite just touch it against the face of the chuck go to my digital readout set it at zero so i now know when I come back off the face of that chuck, my finish dimension is going to be 70 on my DRO. And as you can see, I'm a bit off that at the moment. So I need to clean up the end, one end first. Once the one end is done, I can turn it over, make sure it's right back tight against the chuck. Then come into my position of 70, face it off, and I know those blocks are 70 mil long. I might be able to recalibrate it a little bit after measuring the first one, but pretty much they'll be 70 mil long. So no time like the present, let's get and do some machining. Okay, so we're going to face the end off. I've just nipped up the carriage so that it doesn't slip back. Okay, I'm going to have to angle my tool around just a little bit more. That's going to affect my 70 mil, but uh, I'm only just going to clean this up and then I'll have to reset that afterwards. So here we go. And that's one end faced off. So we'll stop the lathe. Take it out of the chuck. Give it a quick deburr. When I put it back against the chuck, I don't want it sitting on any burrs. It's just a slight chamfer on the four sides. Here we go. Back in the chuck. Put 
as I said, no need to clock this up. The jaws will be holding it square because the jaws are square to the axis of the machine. It might be a bit off centre or what have you, but it's a flat face. There's no, you know, central part on it, anything like that. So it'll be absolutely fine. Okay, as I said, I'm going to reset my 70 again. So I'll come up, just touch the tool against the chuck, set my zeros, come back out, just nip the carriage slightly so it's not sliding back and forth, and machine the other end. Leaves me half a mil, just as well have that in one go. There we go. And that's the other end done. You know, a quick measure of this one, see how our calibration's looking. Back out the chuck. And it's measurement time. Do a quick measure. It's actually coming out at 69.75, something like that. As I said, not critical. It is machined. I'll add 0.25 onto the next one, just to adjust that calibration. 69.75. Okay. So what I'll do is just come back with my carriage. By 0.25 and we'll call that zero so I know now my finish mark for 70 millimeters should be on the zero which should be pretty good plus or minus 0.1 or 0.2 or what have you but certainly better than a sawn cut um, you know and fairly consistent on length okay Okay, so that's 20 of them done. All of them machined on both ends, 69.9 to 70.1 millimeter, something like that on the overall length. So considering the ends are just in fresh air, it's, you know, within 0.1 tolerance when it could be quarter of an inch, <laughs> it could be six mil in various in length, but nice to have them all the same, somewhere to start from. So next job is to put in the three holes. Now I do have a pillar drill. I do not have a milling machine. Um, my pillar drill could quite easily do the uh, M8 and the two sort of 5.1 millimeter holes. Um, I would have to mark them out, center pop the holes and what have you to get them, you know, pretty close to within tolerance. Um, but my pillar drill will not drive a 16 mil drill bit to do this counter ball. Um, so my idea is put them up in the lathe. I'll mount the 16 mil drill in the headstock, clamp the blocks on a milling attachment, which I do have, I've had to make one up, and basically in with a normal 16 mil drill, and then swap it out for a flat bottom 16 mil drill, and do it into depth using the DRO by bringing in the carriage and pecking it in to depth using the DRO. So, I'll start setting that up then. Okay, so that's my setup done. Uh, I've removed the compound slide off the top of the uh, cross light, bolted on my milling attachment. I've got my workpiece uh, in the vise on the milling attachment, firmly clamped in with a toolmaker's clamp. Uh, we need to work on a better sort of vise for that, but uh, there's more than enough strength in that toolmaker's clamp. I think it's a four inch more and right uh, toolmaker's clamp and it will not move. Let's give you a bit of a closer one on there. No, doesn't want to know. Anyway, so it's there solidly fixed in the vise, and there I now have my 16mm Jacobs chuck, or Jacobs style chuck, it's a quick release chuck, mounted in the headstock.
just what we need. Pope John Paul II was in the UK and Prince William was born at St. Mary's Hospital in London. But what year? off the clump set my center there it is set zero on my readout come across 22 and a half mil lock my car cross slide put my center drill in WD on the brush, park him up, yeah, about 900 out of RPM, something like that, 950, set it below. Unspotted, loosen the clamp, turn it to an arc the other way, there we go, 21, 22, 22 and a half, spot the second hole. Well, that will make them 45 between centers. And I can drill them out after with a 5.1 drill. Okay, right back to the center point. Loosen the clamp. Into the center, zero. There on the DRO. Center drill center. Okay. Change out to a 6.8 mil drill, which is tap and drill for 8 mil. Set the drill to the face. Zero my DRO. If I go 18 and a half from there, because it's a half mil rule, I know I'm not going to drill into my fixture. Okay. Go 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, a little bit of WD. Okay, I'm switch off. 